Welcome to the studio here in Paris. We're talking about how to use data to engage with energy customers. Welcome, Luis. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Customers and energy, how do we show them value? Well, uh, very interesting question. Um, I think consumers don't care about energy at all. Consumers care about the value they can, they can get from energy. I mean, they will drive an electric car, they will have their own PV, PV panel, they want to be more green, more efficient, but in the end that needs to mean something for them. And something that doesn't really mean that they need to use a lot of cognitive effort in order to become compatible with that, that own requirement. Uh, the point is that for us to reach that tipping point, I would say that we need a set of blocks, building blocks that we need to bring together so that we can really deliver value based on data to consumers. There is a very interesting report coming from CR. CR is the, the Council of European Regulators in Europe. And they, they have a picture of a pyramid that really brings together all the building blocks. And I think that's quite a simple way and very interesting way to explain why data is so important for consumers. First, what they say is that we need to have smart meters in place. And it's, a, it's an interesting thing because we speak about smart meters, I would say, since for the last 15 years, maybe. And now we realize that policymakers and regulators are the ones really pushing for smart meters. And the reason is that smart meters is the first device that we can provide consumers with that can be used to really start engaging consumers. For us, it's a kind of device that not only brings us the data of the consumer and then allows us to deliver it to the market based on consent, on consent from the consumer, but also it's a way of monitoring the network and making the network work properly. But the, the key issue now here for our discussion is consumers and not, and not the, the really the operation of the, that, that we manage, that, that we run. So we need to collect data and we need to make, make that data available to consumers and also to their representatives, I mean suppliers and aggregators, the energy communities. And now we see a trend also towards uh, collective cell consumption, which is something very interesting because really can deliver value to consumers. And the next step will be to provide them with the capacity to enter into flexibility markets, so-called flexibility markets. And I think that is really a way to bring value into the equation. And why? Because we need, as a as system operators, we need to cope with a very challenging environment. I mean, we have these intermittent renewables coming in, not only at very high voltage levels, but also down to low voltage levels. And simultaneously, we see different patterns of consumption, of demand, which creates a very difficult situation for us to, to manage. So we need to buy services from consumers. We need to buy their, their flexibility. We need them to shut down their devices where, they, where there is no wind and to work the other way around where there is too much wind and too much uh, solar generation. And flexibility is the key for that. And the cornerstone of it all is the data. Yes, I think more than the cornerstone is really the glue that ties all these building blocks together. And this is the way I think we need to move forward. What changes do you want to see in the next three to five, maybe ten years? Yeah. It's really going to change the way the energy market is going. Yeah, I, I think there is a lot of things that need to be changed. I, I, we, we need to remain positive. We are going in the right direction now. But we need to see more Firstly, on cooperation, and cooperation is key. Not only the SOs, the SOs, because of this flexibility and because we have this, this renewal spread across the networks, but also we need to work more with the other stakeholders, with these new stakeholders that are coming in, like the energy communities, the aggregators, but also the traditional ones, the retailers, also the policy makers and the regulators. And I would say that after cooperation, we usually say we need to have smart regulation, but nowadays we say that we need to have a dynamic regulation. So what we see is that we need to move fast, really fast, in order to cope with the transition. That means that regulators, when speaking with this kind of regulated entities like system operators, need to have a more open and transparent process so that we can engage in the so-called sandbox 
uh, of innovation or regulatory sandbox where we can test all these new models and see if it's really feasible to have a cost-efficient system in place that really brings value to consumers. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe to our channels for more industry-related content. <laughs>